Good morning. We're glad to join with you again today on another Discipleship Empowerment Word Study. Hey, I hope you're blessed. Hope that you had a good weekend as we start off another work day. Some may want to forget that, <laughs> but it's the beginning of what we would call a new week, a new work week anyway. And we're just glad to be with you on studying through the life of Joseph, connecting this whole idea how God gives and gave to Joseph and how God used Joseph to establish more of the covenants and promises of God for the people of Israel. And we thank God for that. Before we get going, though, I just thought I uh, wanted to share a couple little things. Today happens to be uh, the 35-year anniversary of uh, Cohen's father going home to be with the Lord. It's hard to believe 35 years ago, his name was Isaac, which was unusual because sometimes they give Bible names uh, amongst the Ketchum people. There's, it's, it's there. But uh, for a leader, and God used him as a leader in the church, in the denomination, and his name was Isaac, and uh, many, many people uh, remember to this day Isaac and how he served the Lord. So 35 years ago, and we're just, you know, remembering on behalf of Colwyn, you know, she uh, was young when her father went home to be with the Lord. But uh, we want to just thank God for his testimony and for his example of faith amongst the Ketchin people. I also want to mention another friend of mine, some of you will know that watch every day, uh, will know Richard Martin. Richard Martin went home to be with the Lord yesterday too. And so we want to continue to pray for Marilyn. And, uh, you know, as we get all, some of us get older, some of our friends are are going home to be with the Lord. And we just want to pray for Marilyn and the and the children, uh, the Martin family, Bruce and, and Dennis, and and that you, that the Lord would just be with them in their, their time of need. So, but here we are uh, coming together as a body of believers, trusting in the Lord for to guide us in his word. And we got another unusual chapter about Joseph. We've talked about how, you know, he was sent into slavery and then how he had uh, uh, became a slave under Pontiff. Um, and then uh, how he not only became a slave, but then how he was uh, brought to the place, uh, I should say Potiphar, brought to the place of, uh, you know, being accused of wrongdoing and then ending up in the king's prison. You know, and we've talked about how how does God use all this negativity? And I, and I'm I know there was times that Joseph must have struggled too, because we even see it a little bit in this chapter, where we look at Joseph, and and Joseph moves from being a dreamer to being a a, a dreamer interpreter. <laughs> it seems like not only God given him some dreams, but got him into the situation that he finds himself in. But now in prison, a couple other people have dreams, and there was no one around to interpret. And it's interesting, in the Egyptian culture and psychic, dreams were very important. They were thought to be spiritually uh, rooted, and so dreams often, uh, people there was people that had uh, uh, full-time jobs in interpreting dreams. Uh, I mean, we've got those same kind of people around nowadays, but they just have different names. But back then they had people, not only people, but books that were written on how, books with pages of pages information of how to interpret dreams. And so when we get into this, uh, the prison and the two that have dreams, uh, they're upset that they have dreams, but because they're in prison, nobody's there to interpret it. And so back then, if you had a dream that it seemed to be different than just uh, some bad food the night before, uh, they would go to somebody and, and pay and have their dreams interpreted. And uh, that still goes on today uh, in a lot of seances and other kinds of, of uh, um, demonic type things. So, we, you know, we got to be careful. There's just all this that's going on. But it's interesting how Joseph clarifies some things concerning dreams. 
So as we begin here we, in chapter 40, uh, we're going to look at uh, how how God gives interpretation uh, to to Joseph, and that's uh, that's important um, because it's the reason why it's important. It's another uh, step you could sort of say in God's program of getting him to the place that he needs to be. So it says in verse 40, it came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their Lord and the king of Egypt. So here they, we get these in the, in the king's jail. Now we need to again hear the second time the word king is talked about with Pharaoh. It's his kind of prison. This wasn't the general prison, but it was places where people that that uh, he wanted to straighten out or deal with were put in that jail. And it's ain't interesting that the person who is in is the guard of the jail and who is now under uh, this whole area of uh, uh, we should say pot of Potiphar. Remember, Potiphar is in charge, and he's the captain of the guard. And so he's also connected with us, and we'll see this here. But let's let's just take a few moments as we see uh, what goes on. And in the background here, uh, they get these two guys from, from uh, the Pharaoh's house to his jail. Probably some event happened. Uh, I doubt that they would have, you know, slurred or said something nasty to Pharaoh. But see, the the butler and the baker, and those are terminologies that we would understand. But the butler would be here. The idea is more that that when we think of Nehemiah, the cupbearer to the king, uh, what would happen is that. Uh, they would have to taste the food first, drink of the cup or taste of the food first. And if they didn't die, then um, then the king would eat of it. And so they had a, a major role because a lot of people were trying to assassinate kings and pharaohs and leaders. That was kind of a common thing. And the way they did it by was by poisoning them. And so what they have, so these pharaohs and kings set up people like a butler or like a, a cup bearer to taste of the the wine first and and in and the baker and that to taste of the food first and if they live you know then that was okay so probably what happens and we don't know this because it's not in the scriptures but probably what happened is that the pharaoh got sick some type of maybe food poisoning or some type and so he was just annoyed and put both of them in jail okay because he's Pharaoh shouldn't be getting sick from the food. And so that's why it says, and then verse 2, and, and Pharaoh was angry with the two officers and the chief butler and the chief baker. Now, you need to understand when it says chief butler and chief baker, this is the, the heads of their departments. You know, uh, they talked about in my research that a, a baker could make up to 50 different kinds of breads and buns the butler would be in charge of making the wine and making sure the wine and anything that was hosting you know that the pharaoh was involved in so they were the chief they weren't the under workers they were the ones that made sure all the other workers were doing their jobs and here pharaoh uh, puts them both in his prison and so it goes on so he put them in the custody in the house of the captain of the guard so who was the captain of the guard, which is uh, um, Potiphar, uh, which we know. And see, and Potiphar also put Joseph in the same prison. And it might have been interesting, one of the commentaries had kind of mentioned that, you know, Potiphar had to deal with something concerning his wife. And maybe he didn't know what to do or how to do with it. So he put Joseph in his prison, in the king's prison. But because he was over that prison, then he would still have a close relationship of some type with Joseph. Because later on, it says, So he put them in the custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. So in this, this 
prison, Joseph couldn't move around and do very much. And then it goes on, Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream, both of them. Each man dreamed in one night in each man's dream with its own interpretation. So they're in prison. And again, we're talking about timeline. Timeline here is very important. Anything that goes on, especially in, in Genesis, are the beginning of things and also the start of things, and they have to work out. So here these two are put in jail, you know, at a proper time. Joseph has to be there. They have to be there. Uh, Potiphar has to be there. Everything all lines up, and now they both, on the same night, have a dream, which is unusual. And so they have a dream, and they state that there is no interpreter. So that was the big problem. They were, they were powerfully moved by these dreams, but there was no interpreter. And uh, so as they began to go on, it says, And Joseph came, to, came into them and in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. So jo why would Joseph even care about these guys? But if, God, but, but if Joseph's got a heart of, of caring for people, which we see he does, he notices that they're both sad. And it's interesting, it's the same kind of idea, this sad, that goes on with Nehemiah too. Not only was Nehemiah a cupbearer, but remember, he noticed, the, the king noticed that the continence or the outward appearance of Nehemiah was also sad. And so, you know, we got some of these similarities that go on. And so he asked Pharaoh's officer who were with him in the custody of the Lord's uh, house saying, why do you look so sad today? What is it that's so sad about you? You know, and we all have that ability to look sad, right? I mean, <laughs> we can walk around in the doldrums and Jesus said, you know, don't go around, you know, looking like this, you know, go around realizing that, you know, the Lord, refresh yourself, you know, try to uh, be upbeat kind of things. I mean, Jesus used other words, but you know, when he talked about the whole area of fasting and, and, and walking in that time of prayer and fasting with the Lord. And verse 8, And so they said to him, We each have a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So this was the problem. There was no interpreter. They had this dream. It was very vivid, but there was no interpreter. So Joseph said to them, Do, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. So here comes a statement that we probably don't even understand in our culture and, and understand how it all works. But Joseph said, doesn't all interpretation, doesn't God know all things? And so Joseph goes to that and says, you know, I've got a God who knows all things. And he, it, all interpretations belong to the Lord. And I thought that was so interesting because he's making that question to the butler and to the baker and says, you know, all these interpretations belong to the Lord. So then the chief priest told his dream to Joseph and he said to him, behold, in my dream, the vine was before me and in the vine were three branches and it was as though it budded and blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. And then we know, see, this is where we, we talked about then Pharaoh, you know, who was there, is in also in the dream. He goes on, Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. So that's why we can see that this butler was actually the cup bearer to the king. So he would press the grapes and, and get it all ready in this dream and put it into the cup. And then he would put the cup, after he would taste it, into Pharaoh's hands to show that it was saved. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation. The three, day, the three branches are three days. And now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up uh, your head and restore you to your place. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. 
So the dream that for the butler is that he's going to be restored in three days. Then he goes on, But remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh, and to get me out of this house. <coughs> so, God gives, Joseph goes to God to get the interpretation, and the interpretation that God gives was, that he, he showed to the butler that in three days you're going to be restored back. And then he says to the butler, and when you get restored back, can you take some time and tell Pharaoh my my problems, what I'm going through? I'm, I'm not to be here. I've done nothing wrong. I'm innocent. And he goes on to 15, he says, For I indeed... I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also I had done nothing there that they should put me into the dungeon. And so he's reflecting about what's going on. Maybe this dream tr triggered something in his own heart. And he's saying, you know, let them know I've done nothing. I'm innocent. I'm an innocent man in prison here. I'm in the dungeon. I've got sometimes shackles on my ankles and my hands. And please tell Pharaoh, I'm a Hebrew, I'm a wanderer. I don't deserve to be here. In fact, I deserve to be back in my with my own people. And so he talks about these three branches. He interprets them and they restore back. And he said, remember me. And this idea of remembering me is something that's going to come up again as we look at the next, as the baker. It says, when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also, in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So his picture is, is that he's got three baskets piled up on his head. He's carrying them probably to the table. But while he's carrying them there, birds attack and eat the bread out of the uh, uh, basket. basket. And so, so Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets, again, are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off, lift off your head from you and hang it on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from it. So here is the opposite. One, and this is where we're going to maybe put some similarities or spiritualize a little bit. Because God gives the interpretation. And what we have here, and many people are reflecting on this in the commentators, uh, commentaries, I should say, where they see a likening up here of the two thieves on the cross. One on one side of Jesus and one on the other side. And they both end up with Joseph, and one is cursing Jesus and going to die, and the other one is, gonna, is saying, you know, Lord, I believe. And Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. And so we have this, this vision of what's going on, and uh, each one of them have a three-day time period. Now, again, you know, we can say that all these things are coincidences, and that's that's possible because we don't have... Uh, thus saith the Lord. But it remembers that in that with Jesus, that on the third day he arose. On the first day he was crucified. And we know on the first day he was also hung on a tree. You know, and died and shed his blood. Here, uh, the butler is raised up. He is now, because being in jail what, to them was like death. You know, it was considered death. There was no hope. And so to be raised up out of jail. Remember, Jesus went down into the bowels of the earth where those who were captive and all. I mean, there is some similarities here, but we, I, you know, I'm always wanting to be careful because we're not trying to say, thus saith the Lord. But we're seeing that there's similarities that are going on with Joseph, what's going on with Joseph and the people around about him. So he has these two people. One's going to be raised to life, and one's going to be raised to death. And it gives the idea of eternal life and eternal judgment. 
And not only that, it also tells us that that this uh, butler is placed upon a wooden tree and that the 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 fowl the and the birds of the air are going to to eat of him and and uh you know it's just it's an amazing story and we have to ask ourselves the question is is the bottom line is just then this story just to show us that Jesus or that uh God is an interpreter of all dreams which is we are already stated is the bottom line that God is trying to show uh, Joseph that he can use him or is there something more here that brings us into the present day that we can see a little bit more glimpses about what Christ went through and about his struggles and how you know we have and and if you go into a lot of you may have Bibles that have cross references in the middle they actually cross reference these scriptures to the time when the when the people are uh, the thieves are being hung on the cross with Jesus. So it's not something I'm 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 trying to make up. It's something that other scholars and that have brought into the interpretation that there is a a um, a fork in the road, as you could put it, where one will have life, and one will have death. And I think there's something that we need to again to remember that uh, as there is this fork in the road, it's a choice. Now, they didn't have a choice at this particular time, at least from what we know. And uh, But we do know that the butler and the, the baker both had the dream the same night. So we, so we know that on the same night, um, they both have a dream, which meant that the dream would be fulfilled on the same day. One would be raised to life, and one would be raised, raised up out of the jail, raised up out of the dungeon, and would experience death. And it's interesting how when you think of, of our walk with the Lord and how we experience things on here on earth that are like a dungeon. And to, to think about that, a dungeon was wait, a waiting place for the end of some type of end. And here we see that, you know, even in our own lives, we too need to be raised up. There's a day coming when we're going to be raised up out of the sin and corruption of this world, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, to eternal life. But we also know on the day of judgment that all will stand before judgment and some will be raised up out of the dungeon to be judged and put down into the eternal pit of hell. So there is something going on here that we may want to see that maybe there is a, a bigger picture that through what was going on with Joseph, going on with these two men could relate to us into the present day as a disciple of Christ. There is a place that we are all have found ourselves in sin and trespasses and iniquities. We're all bound in a dungeon of death, of eternal death. But then through Jesus Christ and through his shed blood, we can be raised up. And you want to be raised up in such a way you have eternal life, not raised up in such a way that you have eternal death. And I think that's something that, you know, we need to think about that our friends and stuff like that, we're all going to be raised up before the judgment seat of the Lord. And the books will be opened up. And if our name is found in the book of life, we have eternal life. But if it is not, we have eternal death. And so it's interesting what's going on here. And it goes on and he says, that within three days Pharaoh will lift your head. And then verse 20. Now it came to pass on the third day. So just. And, and you got to think about here the details. The dream has powerful details. And Joseph's interpretation has powerful details. And you know a lot of times people don't like the interpretation. I remember when the disciples. When Jesus told them this is what's going to happen in three days. This is what's going to happen when we go into Jerusalem. This is, they're going to kill the Son of God. 
but on the third day he will be raised up. And, you know, we don't like some of these kinds of conversations. But in verse 20 it says, Now it came to pass that on the third day, uh, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants. So Potiphar would have even been there for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler. So he lifted him up. He restored him. Restored him to life. Do, do you see this lifting up? Jesus talked, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So the king, Jesus Christ, he then lifts up everyone. And to see that he lifts them up, and he lifts up the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to the butlership again. So he restored him, and it goes on, and he placed the cup in the Pharaoh's hand. So even the details of, of crushing the wine, first of all, the detail of, of being uh, restored in three days, going right back into Pharaoh's court on his birthday, even on his birthday, putting the cup in Pharaoh's hand. This is the this is the details, not only of the dream, but the interpretation that Joseph gives. But in verse twenty two, but it says, But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. So he hanged him or carried out what was interpreted. So we got this fork in the road where both of them are servants. You know, like the thieves on the cross. Both of them were thieves. Both of them were sinners. But only Jesus could say to the one, you will see me in paradise today. What a wonderful thought because of faith. But there's a lot of people out there that are like the other thief on the cross and say there's no hope. There is no way of having eternal life. I... I even had a relative that one time told me that said, you know, I deserve hell. For what I've done to people, for what I've done around in my life, I deserve hell. Well, that's true. We all deserve to go to eternal punishment because of disobedience and sin. But that's why the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is there. Because he wants to lift us up out of that. And if we turn to Christ, we can be like the baker who is restored into the presence of our king. Or we can be like, or I'm sorry, like the butler who is restored in the presence of our king. Or we can be like the baker who is restored unto eternal death. Those are things that we don't think about too often, but we need to be thinking about them. And so, and then the last thing that I want to point out here in verse 23 Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. And it's interesting how when we look at this last phrase here, how he forgot him, this, this idea of forgot is all over the place in the Bible. And it's interesting how often the people of God forgot God. How often the disciples forgot Jesus Christ. How often the church forgets Jesus Christ. This idea of forgotten, and I mean it must have hurt Joseph because it, they feel he was there another couple more years. You know, struggling with this whole idea of forgotten. Not realizing that as we saw earlier in the scriptures in the previous chapters that the Lord was with them. The Lord had blessed him. The Lord had guided him. The Lord, all these kinds of things. But sometimes we don't think that blessings of the Lord when we're in prison. Not realizing that the true blessing of the Lord is that we have eternal life with him. And that he raises us up. And we should never forget that. And so Joseph felt forgotten. And there may be times in your life that you feel forgotten by your friends, your loved ones, family, whatever forgotten. Jesus knows what that's all about. That's why he gave us communion so that we would come to him on a regular basis to remember what he did for us. That's the purpose of communion is to bring us back to memory. The purpose of piling the stones wherever the people of God went 
was to cause them to remember because people often forget what God has done, what God is doing. And the thing that we need to remember the most as disciples of Jesus Christ, and if you're not a disciple of Christ today, you can invite Christ into your heart. You don't need to be the thief on the cross that just wants to curse Jesus and die. You want to be the other one on the other cross who said, Lord, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. And to have the voice of Jesus say to you, you will be with me in paradise today. You will be with me in heaven today. That's what we need to hear. And we should never forget that. When Christ has done that, remember how we are challenged by the Bible not to, for, to lose our first love, but to remember how we have first loved, how he first loved us, and how we need to continue to love him. So don't forget him. Let this not be a day of forgetting, but let it be a day of remembering how Jesus Christ lifted you up from the dungeon, lifted you out of the jail, how he set you, who was a captive, free because of his shed blood. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're just looking into your scriptures and asking, O oh Lord, how does it relate to us today? And Lord, I just thank you that what you give to all who will receive, that you give, Lord, us the opportunity to be restored. The gift of restoration. And that's what you give. And so, Father, I just pray, O oh God, that you would Give us all a glimpse again how we have been restored in you. And Lord, that we would not forget. And so Lord, I just lift up all the people that, that are watching today. And Lord, I just pray that the resurrection power would flow to them. That they would not forget. But to realize that whatever, wherever they are, whatever they may be f going through. That the power of your anointing your ability to restore and to lift up is there for all who will believe who all will trust in you and i give you thanks for that now in jesus name we pray amen well lord bless you are you excited to know that we serve a king a lord that knows where we are has a plan for us and is ready and is willing to lift us up and to restore us if we would just put our hands in his hands. Amen. Lord bless you. We love you. And keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye for now.